Have you ever wanted to recreate MS Paint in your iOS or Android application? Now you can with the drawing view that's introduced in Xamarin Community Toolkit 1.2. Let's go check it out. So here we have the end result. The light gray bar at the top is our drawing view. So you can see, I can just start drawing here. Um, and whenever I do, you can see an image showing up here. So that means we can get the actual points from this drawing view and we can put that into an image straight away. No hassle, just one line of code and you can do that. Now you can also see this button right here which says load points. So you can also do the other way around. You can say, I have this list of points and I want to load that in my drawing view. In this case, it's just a straight line, uh, but you can load any type of points basically into your drawing view. That's what we're going to see how to implement that right now. And I think it's actually supported by all the platforms that are inside the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So iOS, Android, GTK, Mac OS, WPF, UWP, which is really, really cool. Let's go over to Visual Studio and see how to implement this in your own app. And here you can see Visual Studio 2019 for Mac on the left is just a file, Xamarin new file, new Xamarin forms application, something like that, um, with the template that you get out of the box. The only thing I did is install the Xamarin Community Toolkit version 1.2, brand new at the time of recording, just released a couple of days ago. Um, and on the right, you can see it running in the iOS simulator. Um, now let me update the title first. So here we go. Um, this is going to be drawing view sample save that and with the power of hard reload XAML hard reload I should specify um, you can see that it updates automatically on the iOS simulator also works for physical devices also works on Visual Studio for Windows so that is pretty epic okay um, what I'm gonna do is basically remove all of these labels right here and whenever well actually yeah let's do that remove that but what we want to do first is here add this namespace so we can say XML and S and I'm going to name it XCT, but the XCT part can be anything to your liking. And then I'm going to find here the toolkit. So examine.com schemas 2020 toolkit, um, which is a way to for us to include all the namespaces that are inside of the examine community toolkit without having to specify them all separately. So that's really cool. Um, and now we can just use that XCT thing, XCT, and you can see all the things that are in here. So that is nice. Um, now let's see the drawing view should be in here. There we go, drawing view. So I can just specify a new drawing view here and let's see what is actually in there. So a background color, let's start with that. Let's make it light gray. So we have this little um, light gray canvas here. And what are some other things? Of course, all the things that come from like, you know, uh, what we inherit from uh, whenever we implement a visual element. Here we have clear on finish. Let me just add that to, I'm gonna set it to false first. I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, what else do we have? A drawing completed command. I'll get to that in a little bit as well. Enable smooth paths, which will add a little of anti-aliasing, I think, so that your line looks smoother. Um, granularity, I don't even know what that does, but it probably has to do with how granular your lines will show up. Um, the line color, line width, that's also cool. Um, I'm gonna set that in a little bit and, you know, oh, the points, that's also an interesting one. So it, there is an observable collection with all the points that you can actually, um, you know, you can read it, but also you can put points in there something we're about to see. And probably some other stuff that I'm missing right here while scrolling over this really fast. Um, and what we want to do is just set a width, actually a height request of, I don't know, let's say 200 and let's save this. And again, with hot reload, we got this canvas right here and I can start drawing. Here you can see, boom, it starts drawing black lines. Um, so here is where the line color comes in. We can say line color and I can say, let's make it red because red always looks good. Save and I can make red lines. There you go. So see, this is this works pretty easy out of the box. Um, just drawing lines. Now, one thing you'll note, I'll note that right here is um, that whenever you draw a new line, it will erase the other one. Um, that is something that we have an issue for already um, to make an enhancement where you can set like, hey, I want to make multiple lines so that you can, you know, make complete drawings instead of having to um, keep your um, line going all the time, which is not always great. Um, but, you know, so that's something that we're working on. This is just the first version. And from here we can build it out. So that's something that we 
are aware of. Um, and that's where also the clear on finish comes into play, basically, because now you can see, you would expect maybe, I thought it at first, to be honest, that clear on finish would was, was influencing this behavior, basically. But what clear on finish does is whenever you set this to true, it will actually, whenever you actually finish, so whenever I um, um, release the, the tap or the click right here, it will clear it right away. Um, I don't know what the actual scenario might be for that, but you know, uh, the option is there. So if that's something that you want to use for your application, then that is totally possible. Um, I would set it to false, but um, there we go. So what else do we got? Actually, um, this is this is already pretty cool. You can have this canvas. You can use this for maybe your um, signature scenario whenever you want a user to add their signature. Um, let's just write here, Gerald. See, this is kind of annoying. It's it's much better if you can do more um, lines here. Okay, but what you can do is also um, um, have a um, drawing completed command, which is cool. Um, now again, work in progress. Um, and typically, I don't do all the data binding stuff in here to keep the samples more concise, more easy. Um, but there is no event right now for the drawing completed. So I already opened an issue to maybe add that so that also the people who are doing it in code behind um, can actually use the drawing completed as well. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to have to add a little um, data binding right here. So add a command, draw completed. Um, and then whenever I go back here, then I need to add this little property right here. So public command, draw completed, uh, make sure it's a property else your data binding will not work. Um, so let's make it that and I'm going to add here draw completed um, is new command um, there we go. So now we have a new command. And what we want to do here, so this makes it extra funny to, oh, before I forget, let's set the binding context because that's something I always forget and then I need to restart the um, debug session. Um, so here it gets kind of really funny. I kind of expect that this command will also be able to provide you with some arguments. I'm not really sure. I should check out the um, documentation or the code for that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is cheat here a little bit and I'm going to give this a X name and make that my drawing. There we go. Um, and whenever I do this, I can now here say drawing, whoop, draw completed. Um, but what do I want to do here? There we go. So whenever this command is triggered, what we're going to do is um, get the things out of our drawing dot points. It doesn't know it right now because I'm still in this debug session. Um, so actually, you know, let's stop that. And I think I need to rebuild it now because I'm editing things that it doesn't really understand. There we go. Now it sees it. And now we can access again all the APIs from our drawing view, right? So we see all the things in here, things that I've just uh, mentioned already. Uh, but we also have the points in here. So that is where the points um, are added whenever you start drawing things. Now what we can do is we can get an image from that. So that is pretty cool, right? Again, if you think about like the signature scenario when you're where you want to um, create an image from it, and you want to put that on a PDF or something. Uh, that's something that you can totally do. So let's get an image in here. And I'm also give, going to give this a name, uh, the image. And let's do like that. Actually, let's give this a little width request of 200 and height of 200 as well. So we're sure that it shows up. Um, and then what I can do here is say the image dot source is go away here. Uh, the IntelliSense is not really helping me today. Dot source is image source dot from oops, not from stream because we can get a stream from our um, drawing view. And we can say dot uh, get image stream. There we go. So now we can get the image stream uh, from the actual points that are on there. So we don't need to actually do something with the points. I think we also have on our drawing view. Um, oh, it doesn't know this. So using um, we're just adding the using Xamarin toolkit UI uh, views, and we can say drawing view. And I think we can get an image stream through like a static method here as well. 
uh, where we can actually provide the points. So that's cool too. Um, here you can see that. And here you can just provide this collection of points. Uh, we can say what the image size needs to be, what the line width is, needs to be, the stroke color and the background color. So you can even influence these things um, after you've actually drawn um, the lines. Um, so that is really nice as well. So you can just use that points collection. Maybe you can save the points collection somewhere, um, retrieve it later, and you can import it like that. Um, and you can uh, show a nice image from that. But what you can also do is do it directly from our drawing view and you can say get image stream. And now we just have to specify like the um, width and height. So let's make that 500, 500. Um, there we go. And I think that's all we need to do. I said the IntelliSense is not really my friend, but let's just see if we can roll with it. We can run this application. Um, and it should come up any minute. And now whenever we have this draw complete, so whenever I stop drawing, um, which is going to be interesting, again, in a multi-line scenario, um, here we go. Boop you can see that the image pops up and this is an image so this doesn't do anything and whenever I do another one it will make an image out of that and put that in the image right down there below. That is pretty nice. I think, you know, way back when I've used the signature pad or what is it called for, you know, Xamarin Forms, uh, which made it kind of hard to do this stuff and I think this makes it pretty easy to do that same stuff. Um, and you have a lot of customization options with the gray background and everything so that is epic. Now, main page let's do another thing so let's do the other way around like i said maybe you want to persist that um, collection of points and maybe you want to load that back um, so let's add a little button in here as well and give it a text load points um, and give it a little click handler so again this is all sample code please don't copy my mix of events and commands and whatever because that's not what you want to do in a clean architecture. Um, and whenever we then go back to our main page here, we now have this clicked handler and we can say drawing dot, well, um, yeah, we can say drawing dot points, right? There it is again. Um, and we can get and set that. Um, so actually let me get a quick for loop. So I'm gonna say far my points is new. Um, I think it needs to be an observable collection, collection. So let's import the right using for that with the little IntelliSense using system collections object model. There we go. Um, of point and point is just a um, struct a object that is um, already inside of Xamarin form. So we are just reusing that and then do a little for each. Well, actually for loop int i is zero while i is less than, I don't know, let's make it 2000 i plus plus. And then we're going to say uh, my points dot add. We're going to add a new point to it, new point. And let's just make it i comma i. So it will be a linear line, right? Because all the coordinates will be just the same thing here. Um, let's add the semicolon here. And then the last thing we need to do is say drawing dot points is my points. And now whenever we press that button, whoops, not like that. Whenever we press that button, um, it should actually put those lines back in our drawing view. Um, and you can um, um, show it like that. So um, like I said, again, if you have persisted those those points collection, you can just load that back up, show that in a drawing view. And then whenever we have the multi-line support, you can just continue from that, um, that drawing. So basically you could create MS Paint on iOS and Android. That's something I didn't mention. I think this is supported on iOS, Android, UWP, um, GTK, I think basically all the platforms, Mac OS, all the platforms that are supported by um, the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So that is really great. So let's see, this is still working, our drawing. And whenever I say load points, it's going to get that line. It's just going to generate all those points and load that in the drawing view. So that is how you can get started with this drawing view and you can um, very easily add this functionality to your app. Now, I'm very curious what the use cases are for you in your own applications. Like I said, the signature one might be an obvious one, but maybe you're going to create some kind of game where you need to do Pictionary, where you draw a line and other people have to guess what it is. Um, all possible with this nice drawing view. Like I also mentioned, there is a couple of improvements that we can still do. So if you're going to use this and you still see some things that might not work completely um, um, perfect, or maybe you have some things that you would like to see in there, please go over to the Xamarin Community tool 
toolkit repository, open an issue, and we will see if we can get it to work or of course, um, contribute it yourself because this whole control is contributed also by um, Vladislav. So thank you so much for that because this is a great control and I'm sure a lot of people will find this useful. Thank you for watching this video. Please click that like button right down here. Um, and while you're down there, subscribe as well. Check if you've subscribed already. If not, please click that subscribe button so you will join this channel and be informed of new content automatically. Maybe check out the join button so you can join a membership and see you know what that's all about. Maybe support me a little bit for the work that I've been doing here. And for the rest, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.